So Encanto is about a girl and her family. Her family is this amazing, special, extraordinary group of people who have magical powers, and she does not have one. And so our story is really about her trying to understand herself, her role, and then the members of her family around her. And she slowly comes to understand that she actually doesn't really know her family as well as she thinks she does, and they don't really know her. And so it's really a story of her journey uh, to understand them better and ultimately understand herself as well. What is the backstory of our film? How did the Montegraus find themselves in the Encanto? That's a great question. So, uh, Sort of the foundational myth of our family is that, like a lot of other families, actually from Colombia, throughout the sort of Latin American world, and honestly throughout the world, uh, you know, they they had to flee their home, they had to flee violence, and uh, in the case of this family, as they were fleeing, uh, the abuelo, the grandfather of this family, was lost, and. Um, our, our film sort of uh, takes that moment of loss and desperation and we're actually reflecting on the unconditional love that Abuela Alma, who's the matriarch of this family, had for the whole family in that moment. So in our family, in this moment of heartbreak and desperation, her love kind of creates this miracle, creates a new home for her family and for the people that she has uh, brought along with her, her community. So uh, it's both grounded in an experience that is unfortunately uh, a lot of people have had, but then is, again, as Byron was saying, inspired by magical realism, uh, sort of takes on this other dimension where the family finds a new home and finds sanctuary and a new beginning. Jared, why did Encanto have to be musical? Describe working with Lynn manuel Miranda and how the songs became part of the storytelling. Okay, so why did this movie have to be musical? Lynn said this movie has to be a musical. That's why it's a musical. Uh, no, from the beginning, we were really lucky that Lynn Manuel Miranda was part of our core creative team. So not just in writing the songs, but really putting the entire story together. Um, we knew that we wanted to tell a story of this large extended family, um, and we wanted to do that through music, and there's no better way to do that. We knew um, you know, it was going to be set in Colombia, and Colombia has an amazing array of all different types of genres of music uh, that really reflect this wide tapestry of Latin music in general. And so to be able to, to combine these amazing music styles with very specific character types and sort of wed them together, uh, first off, we knew it was gonna be super fun and entertaining and let Lynn really let him go loose, but it also allowed us to have songs that could be uh, like a reggaeton, which is a very modern type of music, and then a song like Dos Origuitas, which is it really feels like a folk song that's been around for a hundred years. Uh, and so we really wanted to, in telling a story about this very large family, all of whom are very different to how the music represent that as well. Sharif, Byron touched on this a bit, um, and you can kind of elaborate. What kind of gifts have the Mazaragal children received? Explain how the magical gifts are reflections of our real life roles within our families. That is a great question. So, um, uh, from the very beginning, uh, we really wanted to uh, create, there's 12 people in this family, so we wanted to create characters that everyone would be able to relate to, would be able to relate to as themselves, or, or see their own family members in. So, uh, we really kind of started out with family archetypes, right? So, Byron was touching on uh, Isabella, sort of as the golden child, the one who can do no wrong, the perfect kid, and so we thought, okay, so, based off of this family role that a lot of us can recognize and know well, what's a gift that she could have? Uh, flowers out of her footsteps. So from then, you know, we started thinking about, you know, Julieta, who is Mirabel's mom. She is uh, the caretaker, the nurturer, the healer. And so we gave her the ability to heal through food. You know, we have Peppa, who is an aunt who has a wide range of emotions. <laughs> and so we thought, okay, like, so, you know, there's those people who you, they enter a room and it's like the weather in the room sort of changes. So based off of that, we're like, okay, so what if she actually can control the weather with her emotions? And then, you know, Camilo, we were like, everybody's got like a little drama kid in their family who can shape shift and do impressions. So that's him, you know, Antonio, who's the youngest. You know, we all know that shy kid who 
Maybe he feels not so comfortable talking to people, but he's really close to animals, and that's where Antonio and his ability to communicate with animals came from. So we really just tried to start with, in all the instances, like from very relatable family archetype roles, and then say, okay, if this was magic, what would it be? And that's where we sort of got all these different magical powers. Jared, who is Bruno, and why? <laughs> Yeah, well, we don't talk about Bruno, so I don't know if I can answer the question. Um, Bruno is one of the original three triplets uh, that Abuela Alma had the night that the Encanto was created. Um, he is somebody who was given the gift of being able to see the future, but he's somebody who kind of only saw the negative things coming in the future. As a result of that, he kind of had a difficult relationship with his mom, Abuela Alma, um, and not to give away any spoilers, but he didn't feel right within the family. He couldn't really find his place. He's sort of the black sheep, and he left the family. Um, over the course of the story, you start to understand why he made that choice, what he's been up to, and what he really cares about. Uh, and so he's a character, I think, ultimately, that you'll find um, his story once you get the full, flush out version of who he is. Uh, it's one of my favorite characters, uh, and somebody who I think people are really going to enjoy watching. Oh, I mean, the house 100% is his own character in this story, you know? Like, uh, uh, from very early on, Jared and Byron had this idea of a living house and a house that was uh, kind of reflective uh, and encompassed the family that lived in it, right? And so we went through a lot of different evolutions of what that could mean and who that character would be, but the one that we landed on and loved the most was the idea of the house as kind of the family dog, you know? The family dog has a different relationship to each person in the family, you know? Maybe it like loves to sleep on one person's bed and like sort of has a little beef with another person, but that it would be, that it would be just an intimate member of the family that would have really specific opinions and, and desires and would just be like a fun, a uh, joyous reflection of this family. But the journey that the house takes throughout the film is very reflective of the family uh, in a really close way. So the house is really both its own character and a reflection of the family. Tell me about the voice cast ensembles for this film. Oh, wow. I, th I think that our cast is, is one of the most ambitious that we've ever had. Uh, we've never tried to put an extended family on screen before at Disney Animation. Uh, we have 12 main characters, um, and each of those uh, characters had to separate. You had to fall in love with them. You had, to, you had to not just present what we expect of those characters, but then throughout the movie to start to change that and start to see these different facets. Uh, and so when we started to actually cast, of course, we needed to start with Mita Bell. The whole movie is anchored by her, and we needed somebody who could be vulnerable and super funny and really be able to sing lots of different types of music. Um, so Stephanie Beatrice, when she came in, I think right away we knew that that she was someone super, super special, somebody who could do all of those things. And then also she brought so much of herself into that role. A lot of what you hear is actually uh, ad libs that she did uh, in the recording booth. Uh, and there's just a very specific um, personality that she was able to, to find with Mita Bell, which is this unbelievably human, uh, flawed, very real type of character. Uh, and then for every other member of the family, uh, whether that was, you know, I think next up was John Leguizamo as Bruno, who's this, this secret we've actually had to keep for quite a long time. I think early on, um, we knew that we needed someone in Bruno that could also do a lot of different things. Um, somebody who, um, when Mirabel comes into contact with, that you really bought that relationship. Um, and so having John be part of that was really, really um, exciting for us. Also, that he gets to rap in the movie is amazing. That was a really, <laughs> that was a really, really fun day. And then uh, Maria Cecilia Botero, who plays Abuela Alma, um, one of the, maybe the most tricky role in the entire movie, somebody who you have to believe cares about her family, but is also stern at times, but can also be uh, lovable and fun, uh, and I think trying to walk that line where you empathize with her, but she can also sometimes be the antagonist for our story is really, really tricky. I can't imagine anybody but Mari Say being able to, to tackle that role. And then beyond that, we have this amazing cast of really um, emotional, comedic, 
Um, very funny, unbelievable singers as well, I think, between um, Diane Guerrero, who plays Isabella, and Jessica Darrow, who plays Luisa. We knew we needed to have the strong sisters in there. And then the other side of the family, you have Adasa's Dolores, who's hilarious, and Renzi Feliz, who plays Camilo, who's awesome, and Ravi Cabot Conyers uh, playing little Antonio. You have to believe that, that this little kid, first off, that has this amazing relationship with Mita Bell, but has all of that vulnerability uh, a child does. And then you have the parents, uh, you know, Angie Cepeda, who plays Julieta, Mirabel's mother, and Wilmer Valderrama. We, we knew that they had to feel like a real couple, and we love that, the chemistry between the two of them. I think Wilmer had some of our, our funniest outtakes of the entire project. Uh, and then on the other side, you have Carolina Gatan, who plays the very mercurial uh, Peppa, who is hilarious and over the top intentionally so, who's super, super fun, and Mauro Castillo, who plays Felix, uh, and is just the life of the party. You want to spend every day. So I think, I think for all of us, we feel hugely, hugely um, uh, in awe of our cast, uh, and so, so lucky that we were able to go on this journey with them. Oh my goodness. I think my my biggest wish is that audiences walk away from this film and they say, let me think about my own family. Let me think about like what maybe I assume about them and maybe don't know. How can I ask questions? How can I get to know people better on their own terms? Uh, so if this movie starts dialogues between people and their families and, and uh, sort of prompts us to look more closely and be curious, that's amazing. I, I would love that. <laughs>